Be sparking and rushing mad like inside the dark Call me Bill Snatcher Just the brother for the rapture I hang lines, holding on strong Hard to capture, extravagant Resurrect the track and it's militant And I react like a convict And start killing It's manifesting The gods work like appliances Dealing in my sake like a lot Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another discussion for Boruto Naruto Next Generations, the manga, and for anime only fans, this is the time of the month where a lot of the content that we talk about here on the channel is going to be spoiler heavy, so I thank you for your support. However, if you're still here, I'm assuming you guys are all caught up with the Boruto manga and you do not care about me talking about spoilers or speculative theories that are based off of stuff that takes place in the manga. So with that being said, let's jump right into the actual discussion. So diving right in, I think we need to have a conversation about who it is that's in the final pod that Amato brought to Konoha and Amato said in the last chapter that, hey this is going to be a really good ally for Konoha and I've seen people say that hey I think this is Delta I've seen people say what if it's Kashin Koji we know that Kashin Koji escaped from Ishiki and Ishiki said hey he's probably going back to his master I've seen people say well what if this is another legendary shinobi from Konoha that Amato did the same thing did with Kashin Koji Koji, where he got Jiraiya's DNA, he made a clone out of Jiraiya, and then he turned that clone into a cyborg. Well, what if we had the same thing going on here? And I talked about it in my review about how this really reminded me of what was going on in 2010 when Masashi Kishimoto ran with the whole thing of who is in the actual sixth coffin that Kabuto had. And back then in the manga, so not the anime, but in the manga, when this was going on, you had a lot of people throwing out all kinds of theories. There weren't a lot of people at the time again in the manga's run saying they're like yo this is Madaru Chia. You had people saying this was the Sage of Six Pass. You had people saying that this was Shishui Uchiha. You had a lot of people throwing out all these wacky names and so I want to kind of take the same approach here. I want to look at the pros and cons of different legendary shinobi being inside of this actual pod and I want to start off with Minato Namikaze and I'm going to say that when it comes to the actual theme of the Boruto franchise Minato makes the most sense right here and I'll explain to you why right now so obviously when you look at it from a narrative perspective Minato makes a lot of sense because Code has a jutsu that allows him to teleport anywhere where those actual markers are and it's directly compared to the actual flying Raijin so you would think like okay a cyborg Minato would be a great way to counter that I don't disagree with you but looking at it from a writing standpoint Minato makes a lot of sense above any of these other shinobi and this is why so essentially Actually, Boruto as a franchise has a theme about where does science fit in this world of ninja? Can science and ninjutsu coexist with one another? And what you've seen with the car organization is that car is a representation of what happens when you lean too far into relying on ninja tech. Something that Naruto and Sasuke try to draw into Boruto's head that, hey, it's like shinobi tools. It depends on how you actually use it. Well, by using Minato in this aspect and making a cyborg out of Minato, you you kind of bring up that same theme and you're essentially making Naruto confront his actual ideas and belief on where does science fit in this world and the reason why is that when Naruto was watching Kashin Koji fight against Jigen you had moments where in the actual panels Naruto's eyes were widening Naruto was very shocked he was shaking and he was like wait a second this guy's fighting style is very familiar well we know that Kashin Koji was a cyborg clone of Jiraiya so now you're in a situation where when you look at how Naruto reacted to cloning in Naruto Gaiden, he was absolutely disgusted by the lengths that Orochimaru went through when it comes to actual cloning. Now, he knows that Miski is a genetically created son of Orochimaru and Naruto has some okay with that. However, this is something completely different here because now you're in that situation where Naruto is looking at a cyborg clone of his mentor, somebody that Naruto in his heart has already accepted is actually dead. The idea that Amato is able to bring back his mentor via cloning technology, something that completely violates the laws of nature, that right there forces Naruto to ask the question, is cloning okay? Not only that, you bring him back via a clone, then you scientifically enhance his body with all these biomechanical enhancements, turning him into a cyborg, and then Naruto
Naruto watch this guy go on a suicide mission and end up dying in order to give Naruto the chance to actually get victory the same way that Jiraiya did. That's something that will piss off Naruto, but now you have the situation where if you make this Minato, you're also in the situation where Naruto's now looking at the cyborg version of his father, the clone cyborg version of his father who gave his life in order to protect the balance of Biji between the actual five great nations. So now you're in that situation where Naruto has to confront where he actually stands on there. And I think that's something that works because now we get to see, is there a line where Naruto says this is going too far? Now, when you look at it from an actual combat perspective, Minato being brought back as a clone that gets turned to a cyborg, obviously it's not going to be the same personality as Minato Namikaze that Naruto knew. This would be a completely different person because even though it's a clone of Minato, the personality is going to be different because it's a completely separate being. They're just the same on a genetic level, but their souls are completely different. Well, if you give him the same jutsu, this means that you have a clone version of Minato who was already strong, but now you have these scientific enhancements that come from the nano machines and the biomechanical enhancements done to his body that make him physically stronger. But then you also add on the fact that this clone could probably use perfect sage mode the same way that Jiraiya's clone Kashin Koji was using perfect sage mode. Now you have that power added on top of it. And that's something that kind of fits in line with what you actually saw there because now it's two people who are close to Naruto who have been brought back to life at this point. And when it comes to actually combating Code, now all of a sudden it doesn't matter where Code has those different straps at because you could have this cyborg version of Minato just simply put down the flying Raijin markers outside of each of the ninja villages and everywhere that Code pops up, that version of Minato will be able to actually show up in combat Code. And this is something very interesting because Amato would not actually take the trouble to make a cyborg and not make it at least relative to the power of Code once Code has his limiters taken off because Amato more than anybody will know what Code is actually capable of. And so now it's like, okay, you have a cyborg that has physical strength that can rival Code and then he has Sage Mode on top of it. So now it becomes a question of whether or not the actual means justifies the end. And this would actually be a really good way for backdoor payoff for what could have been foreshadowing where when you look at the Boruto the movie, and I believe the manga covered this scene as well, you have that moment where Boruto is looking over at Hinata and he basically says like, hey, my dad grew up without an actual father. You know, if Grandpa Minato was here, you know, my dad could have learned what it's like to have the Hokage as your father and what it's like not to have the father there. Having Minato name drop in that way and then have him being brought back as an actual cyborg, that could be some pretty half decent foreshadowing right there if they choose to actually go that route. I think that just from an internal conflict standpoint, narratively, this is something that I think would definitely work. However, as I said in the actual review, I'm leaning more so towards this being Delta, Akashi, and Koji, but it's kind of fun to look at the possibilities of who could actually be inside of a model's final pod. But I want to know from you guys, what do you guys think about this idea of Minato being inside of that final pod? Do you guys think this is a good idea? Would you be okay with it? Let me know down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.